It's a joy. If you got your Bibles tonight, go with me to a very familiar place, 1 Samuel chapter number 17. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. And I pray that you'll bear with me tonight as I exhaust once more the story of David and Goliath. And uh, I hope that you do not turn me off tonight because you probably know it better than I do. But I believe, as I said this morning, this word, as long as it's alive, as long as God's alive, we can find something fresh and new every time. And I'm thankful that the word of God is alive today. And uh, I pray that it will help you um, burden for the church tonight. And uh, growing up in church, <clears throat> as a pastor's kid, I'm a PK. Somebody say amen to that. And uh, 26 years old, I grew up in my daddy's church, I guess. I surrendered preaching when I was 19. And uh, so all that time and started preaching shortly after I surrendered to preach on the road and then been married for three years and up in South Carolina. So the 19, 20 years in my dad's church and the three and four nearly years at the church I'm at now, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people sit in a church house and hurt. And they sat there and hurt the next Sunday. And they'd sit there and they'd hurt the next Sunday. And instead of bringing their burdens and their problems to God, they would tell Him about those problems. They would tell Him about those burdens they would bear on an altar. But before they got up from their prayer, they would pick them all back up and walk back to the pew and walk back to the seat and say, Lord, I might just try it one more time on my own. But can I encourage you tonight that the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. And those burdens are not for you to bear alone, but He said, cast your care upon me. Amen. He is standing here this evening with His arms open wide, wanting to handle the things in your life for you. You can't handle them. Amen. You'll worry yourself silly. You'll worry yourself to death if you try to get it all under control. But if you just cast your care upon Him, for He cared for us, that'd be a lot better way to live tonight. Amen. So I want to try to go into David's life and this portion of the text of his life and see what he has for us today through the Word of God. We'll begin reading in verse number 25. The Bible says, And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? Listen here. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Would you pray for me tonight? Father, we love you. Lord, and we thank you for being God in our life. Lord, I praise your name for the soul saved this morning. Lord, and for the help that was given to the people of God. But Lord, you know us. We are needy people. And God, Lord, I need you every moment of my life and every moment in my day. Lord, and I pray, Lord, that this morning not just be something we forget, but Lord, I pray that you do see that we need something else tonight. Lord, we have a big week ahead of us. Lord, there's people that's got to go to work and they got to go face the daily life that they live and I pray Lord that you would give them something this day to carry them through the week and God would you be glorified tonight and God Lord would we be better Christians and walk closer to you than we ever have before give your people strength and help us now we do ask in Jesus name we pray amen and amen I was in uh, North Carolina matter of fact I was up in Reedsville North Carolina on the Virginia line about three weeks ago. 
And uh, Jennifer's mother had a birthday party on a Sunday, so she stayed back home. And she did all the festivities that the daughter's supposed to do when your mama has a birthday. And I went by myself. Well, for the past seven months, it's wake up Sunday morning, rush, 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 baby cry, rush some more, let the baby cry some more. But on this day, I actually got to wake up and there was peace and quiet in the hotel room. And I said, glory to God for that. And I got up and I got ready and I grabbed my Bible and I went over to the desk there at the hotel and I began to read and open it up and pray. And for whatever reason, I, I didn't do the scroll through and stop my finger and just start reading somewhere, but I opened my Bible and it fell to this text. And I just started reading through this story of David and Goliath one more time. And uh, I'm guilty of this tonight. I'm going to go ahead and confess. Halfway through the story, I said, Lord, why am I even reading this? Lord, I know this story since I was a little boy. Lord, I can tell anybody this story forwards and backwards, every detail, every ounce of this story. I know it. And the Lord told me, I don't know if He talks to y'all like this or not up in Simpsonville, but down in Abbeville, He talks to me like this. Shut up and just read it. Just keep reading the Bible. Amen. He just told me to keep reading, so I just kept on reading. And there's two statements that David makes in this story tonight that I really want to hone in on. The first one is the one that we've read in our text already. Where in verse number 26, he said this, For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Boy, and that thought just began to ring inside my soul. And I began to ponder on that and begin to pray and begin to think about it. And the more I thought about it, I don't think David was trying necessarily to get Goliath's number and wanted to go to IHOP after the battle was over so he could get to know him a little bit better. I don't think he was wanting to get acquainted with Goliath. I don't think he wanted to know where he came from, who his family was. Maybe they was kin somewhere down the line. That's not why he wanted to know who he was. But I begin to wonder maybe as David was doing his deeds that his father had told him to do. David was off there watching the sheep of his father. He was doing the things that his father told him to do. He was minding the business of God. He was sitting on a hillside somewhere enjoying the fellowship with his God. And he was sitting there in the presence of God. And his daddy told him, son, go watch after your brothers. Go take them something to eat. Go take them something to to drink, take the king, some good cheese, amen for that. He said, son, I need you to go to where the battle is and take care of everybody. So David walks away from the presence of God while he's watching the sheep. And how many of you understand, I believe that David was living in a place just like me and you are. David left the presence of God and he walked right into where the hottest part of the battle was. But I thought about that just like we live. We come in on Sunday morning, we come in on Sunday night, we come to church on Wednesday, we get with God, we hear the choir singing, we hear the preacher preach, and we get energized, and we get fed, and we get spiritually helped, uh, and we realize how good God's been to us, and no more than we start having good jubilee down in our heart, service is over, Monday's here, and we're back on the battlefield somewhere, and we're back facing the devil, and we kind of feel like David, maybe we just walked away from the sheep where God had us sitting down and enjoying the presence of God and now we're facing those things that are defying God's people we are listening to the people talk about God because we are living in a day and hour now where nobody wants to hear about God anymore nobody wants to hear about my church got a good choir nobody wants to hear about our church got a good preacher and we feel like David when he left the place where God had him and now he's listening to Goliath curse God curse the people of God and David looks over there and he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Because you don't understand, I've just been with God all day watching the sheep over there on the hillside. I ain't heard nothing like that in a long time. I don't know who he thinks he is, but somebody needs to do something about it. I don't think he was trying to get acquainted. I was just trying to, I'm thinking he was trying to figure out who does he think he is. His britches, he might be big, but his britches are a little too big. Amen. Who does he think he is? He makes that statement. And then he makes another statement over here towards the end of our story. And I'll get to that in a minute. But I begin to ponder on this. And I begin to study out through this scripture. And I want to preach on this tonight if the Lord will help me. Me and my sisters used to sing an old song and it went, Victory is sweet 
And boy, I begin to think about that song and this title and this, this text right here, and God began to put that in my heart, that you do not have to live in a defeated place in your life, but you can live a victorious life in the name of Jesus. You can live in victory tonight. I don't know what it is that you've been going through. I don't know what battles you may have been facing, but you can have victory in the Lord tonight. Can I give you three things, and we'll go on to the house, and I'm going to Pennsylvania. Somebody say amen. And, but I'll be back shortly. That's too far north for a boy like me. Amen. I will be back quickly as possible. Amen. Three things that you can live a victorious life tonight. Number one, you've got to examine your fight. You've got to examine your fight. You know, I, I believe a lot of people live defeated in their life because they fight in the wrong battle. They, they are looking at a multitude of battles standing on a hillside in their life and they are trying to tackle every one of them. Did you notice that when David showed up on the scene, he surely seen everybody out there fighting, and he surely seen all those Philistines that was up there clanking on their armor and just beating their staves down in the ground shouting for the victory, and he looked at the children of Israel as they were doing their best to stand for God and to stand for what's right. David didn't grab no sword and say, hey, I'll go kill all of them. But God put something down down in him to hone in on Goliath. And he said, this is the battle that you need to be fighting right now. David, I, I love what I love about this story, Brother Cox, is that the two people that this story is really about shouldn't have been there in the first place. Amen. David was supposed to be over there watching his daddy's sheep, was he not? He was supposed to go take the food to his brothers, take the cheese to King Saul, and head on back to the house. Ain't that not what his daddy told him to do? Goliath shouldn't have been standing on top of a mountain somewhere cursing God. Goliath should have never been there. David shouldn't have been there. Goliath shouldn't have been there. But that's what the story's all about. And a lot of times in our life, I hope I'm, I hope I'm helping somebody tonight, a lot of times in our life, the things that we face, they seem like they shouldn't have been any kind of object to begin with. But a lot of times they turn into a battle. And if you're not careful, you'll look at everything around in your life and you'll start slinging your sword at everything and you'll never win the battle until you say, God, show me what battle I'm supposed to be facing. And show me the battle I'm to be fighting, Lord. You have to examine your battle. Can I ask you this? You're trying to fight the battle God's got for you, or you're trying to fight your battle and everybody else's? Uh, I, I remember as a young man, it seemed like the older a Christian gets, the more battles they try to fight for everybody else. They try to say, oh, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Well, no, what we need to do is we need to say, I'll pray for you that the Lord will show you how to handle this. Amen. It ain't my job to fight nobody else's battle. Amen. It's my job to encourage you when you get in the battle to say you stand strong. You have faith. You keep fighting the fight. Amen. You say we ought not be fighting. Oh yes we should. We're in a battlefield brother not a recreation room. Amen. This is a fight. Oh brother Paul said I fought a good fight and I kept the faith. I want to encourage somebody tonight. If I can in Simpsonville, South Carolina fight the good fight of faith. Don't give up but keep on going for the name of Christ. And you keep on going. You have to examine your fight. But not only that, you need to notice the equipment found. Boy, I love this part. You know how the story goes. Old brother Saul, he's talking to David. David finally persuades him. He says, you, you know, while I was watching my daddy's sheep, I fought a lion and a bear. I killed both of them. He said, and I, I don't think this Philistine, this giant will be any worse than they are. I'll just fight them. He finally persuades King Saul to let me go ahead and tackle this dude. Amen. That's how we'd say it down in Abbeville. Tackle this dude. Amen. I, I ain't got all this fancy preacher wording down yet. Amen. I just say it how it comes out. Amen. Let me show that dude what's up. Amen. Saul says, okay, David, i tell you what. Here you go. You put this on. You put this shield on, you put this armor on, you put this on here, and you put this on there. He said, and here, grab my sword. Can you imagine? Now, we know David's just a young man right here. He's just a young boy, maybe a young teenager. Can you imagine a full-grown king giving him a little old boy sword? I bet you that thing was as tall as he was. He probably had to wear it like a backpack, started dragging it around. He looked at King Saul, and he said, King Saul... 
He said, one problem. He said, I've not proved this before. He said, I've never went to any kind of battle other than that lion and that bear. He said, I don't know anything about standing on the front line like your men do. He said, I don't know anything about the tactics and the ways of the fight that they're supposed to. I've never had any training. Goliath, he's been trained ever since he was my age. He knows 20 times as much about fighting as what I do. I do not have any right to go to battle with this, but I'll tell you what I do have is I've got the Lord. I've got something down inside of me that says, you know what, he needs to shut his mouth. And there's just something down in me that says I can do it. King Saul, I don't know about you, but I'm just going to leave all this stuff right here. I'm going to go down there to where that brook's at and grab me five smooth stones and I'm going to take one of those rocks and I'm going to put it in my sling and I'm going to say a prayer blessing over the top of that thing and all around it and I'm going to trust God that while He sent me up here in His divine amen, His divine inspiration to have me here at this moment, I will take down this giant. I love how the Bible tells us how this story went because when it starts to describe Goliath, it specifically gives us something that he is wearing on top of him. The Bible tells us over here in the first part of the Scripture, it says that this giant, he wore a coat of mail. You remember where the Bible tells us that? I begin to look that up and it describes this breastplate or this shield that he would wear on his shoulders that would come down over his chest that no sword or no spear could pierce through. Almost as if fish scales just on top of one another to protect him from any harm. And you know, Saul, when he is starting to dress King da- or David, not King David, but little boy David, you see how that just tried to slip out? It's hard to get out of that rhythm, ain't it? I'm glad he ended up being king, Amen. When he starts dressing David in the armor, the Bible says that Saul put a coat of mail on him. Boy, when I read that, I seen red flags. Red flags going everywhere. And the Lord said, you know, that's the problem why most Christians can't win their battles anymore. is because they're trying to face their battles and they're trying to fight their giants with the same tactics that their giants have. We're trying to go to battle with the enemy, with the same things that the enemy is going to battle with us. David said, I can't handle all this now. He said, I've not proved none of this. Can I say, if you're trying to fight your battles by the way of the world, you'll never win that battle. But you have to come by faith and do it with the tools that God has provided for you. You say, what is my tool tonight? Your tool is right here in your hand. The Word of God have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. You say, what's another tool I got? One of the greatest things that we have on this side of eternity. It's prayer. It's we can go directly to God the Father. We have an advocate. Amen. And we can say, Lord Jesus, I can't do this on my own. Amen. And I'm glad to know that Jesus Christ Himself is the listening to our prayers. And then He looks at His Father, our God, and said, Lord, what He meant to say was, is He needs you real bad. Would you go down there and help him fight that battle? We have prayer and we can call on the name of the Lord. You have to notice your equipment found. Are you trying the ways of the world tonight to get that battle? Or are you trusting God to fight it for you? Lastly, I want you to notice this. Not only do you have to examine your fight and notice the equipment found, but I want you to see lastly, and this is where I want to give you a little bit of Bible and we'll go to the house. Lastly, you have to exercise your faith. Look with me in verse number 34. The Bible says this, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock, and I went out after him and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. You say, Brother Jared, how am I going to exercise my faith? You have to look back at the things that God's done for you already in your life. I'm glad to know that, amen, one of the greatest problems I have in my life is my memory. 
That's one of the things that haunts me the worst. Amen. How many of us have a past that we wish we could forget every now and then? There's things back yonder that I wish I'd never remember, that I never would have done in the first place, but God has also instilled some things in our mind that He's done for us back there that we can go on today because if God come through for us back there, He can surely do it again out in front of us. I'm thankful that I can look back and I could stand here tonight. I could tell you time and time again how God's come through for me. I remember when I first surrendered to preach, I wondered how in the world am I going to do it, Lord? How am I going to... I can't be a preacher. I felt like Moses. I can't talk. I ain't got the speech. Lord, I can't do this and I can't do that. And the Lord said, I ain't worried about what you can do. I just need you to be willing to do it and let me handle the rest. Amen. And I remember, Lord, how am I going to do it? I met Jennifer. I fell in love. She dumped me. I said, Lord, what in the world is wrong with this woman? Why would she dump me like that? She was crazy. She dumped me. I'm serious as a heart attack. You know what I said? I ain't having that. I kept pursuing. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Buy flowers. Amen. Next thing you know, I was at K Jewelers buying a diamond ring. Amen to that. Amen. I said, Lord, I'm about to get married. How in the world am I going to do it? Lord, I don't know anything about marriage. Lord, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to pay our bills. I don't know where we're going to live. Can I say tonight that God provided us a place to live? God provided us to pay every bill that we've ever had. She was in school, and she was going to go be a teacher. Amen. Well, she finally got a job teaching sixth grade ELA. Somebody say amen or oh me, one of the two. Oh me. Amen. Well, I'm telling you what, that was some of the hardest days of our marriage. I was going off preaching. She was staying home trying to teach. We'd try to call each other. I'd try to tell her I love her. She'd say, okay, yeah, whatever. Click. Amen. <laughs> Maybe that's not true, but that's how I felt it. I said, Lord, how in the world are we going to keep doing this? <laughs> Whew, hallelujah. And you know, one, one day her principal came to her. When, let me just go ahead and clear this air. When you sign a contract to teach public school, you are bound to that contract, are you not? Does any school teachers know what I'm talking about? You don't get out of that. Her principal came to her one day. He said, you know what, I've been watching you. He said, this ain't for you, is it? <laughs> he said, I know your husband's a preacher and he's gone all the time. He said, if you want me to, we'll write a letter to the district and ask if you can be relieved of this duty so you can get back on the road with your husband. <laughs> Woo! I said, Lord, I don't know how we do it, but you'll make a way somehow. God, Lord, you can supply all our needs. I'm looking, I was looking back then to see how God came through. And I was saying, Lord, if you did it back there, you can do it now. And can I tell you now, I'm looking back to that time and I was saying, Lord, if you provide it back there, then whatever's ahead of me, you can take care of it too. Boy, we, I mean, just life, life stories. You can look back and you can see the good hand of God in your life. I remember we found out we was going to have a baby. I said, Lord, Jennifer ain't got no job. We broke. I don't know anything about raising a baby. God, Lord, I still don't know nothing about raising no baby. I just take it one day at a time and say, here's your mama. Amen. <laughs> you know, in my fear and in my worry, I remember we just had a baby. I, she was probably three or four months old and a, a younger couple in our church guy come to me he said how you doing it I said how am I doing what he said how are you raising that baby I don't know how to be a daddy I said dude I got a four month old you asking the wrong person you need to go find somebody got like great 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 grandkids and go ask them how they did it and I look back and I say Lord I don't know how it's happened God, Lord, I don't know what all you've done for me. I can't see every bit of it. But, Lord, I do want to thank you for providing every need in my life for me. Can I tell you, I'm thankful that I can look back and see where God has done things in my life. And you probably can look back in your life and you can see that God has done things divinely in your life. And we ought to raise both of our hands and say, Thank you, Lord. We don't deserve your goodness, but I'm glad that you've blessed us this far. David looked back. I slew that lion and the bear. But I like what David said right here in verse number 36. And he said, And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. 
Not only did David look back, but he looked forward. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad to know that we just don't have things to look back on. Amen. But God wants us to stand tonight with faith and boldness and say, Lord, if you did it back there, then I'm trusting you that you'll do it ahead. God, Lord, whatever may come my way, I've done had enough things come by that you took care of for me that I can trust you that no matter what may come, Lord, I'm just going to keep on holding your hand and say, Lord, let the storm clouds rage and let the storms blow in. Ow! Keep trusting you, Lord. Amen. I think one of the problems that we have and why we do live defeated in our life is because we lack the faith in believing that God can handle the next thing in our life. Oh, but would some Christian stand tonight and say, Lord, I'll just believe you for whatever comes my way. The songwriter said it best. He said, only trust Him. Only trust Him. I love what the disciples told Jesus. Can I say tonight that if the disciples walked and talked with Jesus hand in hand, physically, eye to eye, every day, and they made this statement, they said, Lord, increase our faith. Now they was walking with Him physically. They was talking with Him personally. And here we are living by faith. And can I say from time to time, my faith ain't always ten foot tall and bulletproof. My faith ain't always the size of Goliath. My faith ain't always the strongest of anybody's in the room, but sometimes I have to fall on my face and say, Lord, this one's bigger than I am. And Lord, I need you to increase my faith because I'm wondering if this can be handled, if this can be taken care of. Lord, increase my faith. If we live by faith, surely I think the Lord wouldn't be upset if we asked Him every now and then to give us a little bit more. You may be here tonight and you may be like the other man that said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. A lot of times we live here. We've seen God work in ways in our lives that just would blow our mind and we could trust Him with anything that was related to that problem because we've seen God move like that. But over here where we've never seen Him work before, we say, now Lord, I don't know if you can handle this. Now Lord, I, I, I've got faith. I believe. But Lord, help my unbelief. Today, can I say, it's time that we look forward into our storms. It's time that we look forward into our battle and say, Lord, I'm just going to trust you to take care of all of it. Fight the battle and live in victory. Not only do you have to look back and not only do you have to look forward, but look with me in verse number 37. The Bible says, And David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. You don't just have to look back and you don't have to just look forward, but you need to look up. <laughs> Amen. I, I, it's amazing to me. We started out the victory in Jesus and we started talking about the joy of the Lord. Can I say tonight that the joy of the Lord is our strength? And that the only way that we can live in a victorious life and the only way that we can have victory through our battles is if we look up and trust Him along with it. He wasn't trusting in what Saul gave him. He wasn't trusting in the tips that everybody else had gave him. But he said, you know what? The one that fought the battle for me before is the same one that I'm going to trust this time. And I'm just going to believe God that He'll fight these battles for me. I was <clears throat> reading over this story again the past couple days, and I noticed something, Brother Jacob, if you want to come on to the piano. Oh, Goliath, he's standing on top of that hill, beating on his chest, cussing the name of God and cussing the people of God. And he said, who will come out and fight? Do you have somebody? Do you have a man? He was looking for someone on the side of Israel to be just like he was. He was looking for somebody to have the same kind of boldness that he was, and he was looking for somebody to have the same kind of strength that he was. And can I tell you, the enemy and the world outside of these four walls is looking for someone just like them that they can fight with. The world does not want a faithful Christian. They want the weak one. Send them to the battle because the world knows that that's who we can conquer, and that's the one that we can put our mark on. And we can hurt the name of Christ. But if you send somebody out there full of faith, you'll hurt their feelings. Amen. Goliath said, send somebody. 
He said that we may fight together. Can I say that Goliath was looking for somebody to fight? But in verse number 45, David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of whom the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied. Can I say Goliath might have been looking for somebody to fight, but God was looking for somebody who had faith. We, we don't need to be fighters tonight. We don't need to be the one that comes down and says, Lord, I can make it through this. I'll fight my way out. Lord, tooth and nail, I'll paw my way out. I'll scratch my way out. Lord, I know I can handle this. Lord, I know I can do this. That's not what God's looking for tonight. He's looking for somebody that'll lay down their weapons and lay down all their tactics and come and say, Lord, if I get the end of this battle, it's only going to be because I trusted in you. I'm not coming with a spear. I I'm not coming with a sword. I've got no armor to put on. But I've got a name of God that I can trust in too. And Lord, if I go down tonight, I'm going to go down in the name of Jesus. But I'm thankful to know that if you're trusting in Him, He will not let you fall. And He will not let you be defeated. But if you'll come trusting in His name, there's victory on the other side of that battle. What is it that you're looking at today that's your Goliath? Who is it that is your Goliath and what is it that's your Goliath? What is it that's in your life that's a battle bigger than you are? Can I say that you can answer that battle bigger than you are with a God that's bigger than that battle? No matter what it is in our life, there's not a problem too small or too great that He cannot handle. You can live in victory tonight.